Okay, this is chapter 12. We're going to talk about common adult onset genetic disorders. These are also monogenic disorders. Remember, many monogenic disorders, like we discussed in chapter 11, are first apparent during childhood, but there are some that have adult onset, such as hemochromatosis. And this chapter discusses disorders that have their um, initial onset during adulthood. Okay, so monogenic disorders, um, remember those are ones that come from a single gene. They're caused by single gene problems, okay? And the three that we're going to discuss are your alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, which increases a person's COPD risk, hereditary hemochromatosis, and maturity onset diabetes of the young, or MODI. Okay, the adult onset disorders are multifactorial. There's an environmental exposure triggering the disease onset. So individuals can have the genotype for a disorder, but they may never express the phenotype. There needs that, that environmental component because the environment carries many factors that can further alter the, a person's DNA, including the chromatin and the nucleosome to affect transcription and ultimately the protein necessary for healthy function of cells and tissue. Okay, we're going to start with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Um, it was first described in 1963. Okay, mutations um, that are occurring in the serpin A1 gene, which codes for the alpha-1 antitrypsin. Okay, adults who are uh, homozygous have a high risk of emphysema and other lung diseases. The alpha-1 antitrypsin um, deficiency also causes liver disease in some children as well as in adults, around 15%. Um, so M is the most common allele that carries normal levels of your alpha-1 antitrypsin. So to have adequate levels of anti alpha-1 antitrypsin, uh, people need two copies, um, an M and an M. So you remember you get one from your mom, one from your dad. Um, alleles that lead to decreased levels of alpha-1 antitrypsin are your S and your Z, with the Z having the lowest uh, a level of alpha-1 antitrypsin. So an individual who has two Z alleles are most commonly linked to the deficiency, and those who smoke and have an S and a Z are likely to get emphysema and other lung diseases if they have that and they smoke. A cell with copies of MS or SS, according to your book, probably has enough protein to protect the lungs from the disease. Um, MZ has a slightly increased risk for impaired lung or liver function because it's got that one normal allele, the M, but it also has the Z that has a low level of alpha-1 antitrypsin alleles. And in a couple of slides, I do have a table that um, reiterates everything that I just mentioned here. Okay. Okay, so alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Okay, normally the lungs will have uh, proteolytic enzymes, like trypsin, to break down particulates that we breathe in, um, but that those proteolytic enzymes um, are doing us good, but they have to be kept in check so they don't overdo it and start to target um, self-lung tissue because too much of the proteolytic enzymes can start to auto-digest that lung tissue. Alpha-1 antitrypsin limits the activity of those um, um, proteolytic enzymes that are uh, breaking down the particulates that we breathe. So if we don't have enough alpha-1 antitrypsin um, or if we have too much trypsin, then we get degradation of the lung's elastic tissue. So again, those normally protective enzymes, trypsin, cause uh, damage to healthy tissue because they're not being kept in check because there's not enough levels of alpha-1 antitrypsin. Okay, and just for a little bit of a recap, remember trypsin is produced in its inactive form by the pancreas. Alpha-1 antitrypsin is produced by the liver. Again, I've already mentioned its prote protective effect. Um, both of them have a protective effect, but they need to, one needs to keep the other in check. So um, too much trypsin or not enough antitrypsin can be damaging to tissue, as I've mentioned. But in addition, um, alpha-1 antitrypsin also inhibits the neutrophil elastase, this release from white blood cells, which can cause damage um, to lung tissue if that's not controlled. Okay. 
and that information comes from the Nas National Institutes of Health. So alpha-1 antitrypsin um, plays um, those, those two roles in um, keeping our tissues um, from uh, being self-destructed. Okay, here's that table I was talking about that just lists the, um, the genotype and what results in varying degrees of um, disease. Okay, there are environmental contributions to alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, and that affects the clinical progression of the disease. So certainly smokers have a higher risk um, who have the, um, the genotype for the deficiency. They ha may have symptoms at age 40 to 60, Non-smokers that with this deficiency genotype may um, prolong their symptoms till um, after age 60. So it's important to, to counsel um, people on their risk and also um, to avoid active and passive smoking, uh, in addition to avoiding pollutants, mineral dust, and gas and other fumes in the environment. And there's a table on page 242 um, that has a list of uh, recommendations for genetic testing for this. Okay, so we're moving on to hereditary hemochromatosis. Okay, that is from an excessive, or that results in an excessive absorption of dietary iron by the gastric mucosa. Okay, um, that's where iron accumulates in the liver, pancreas, the heart, joints, skin, and testes. Symptom onset uh, occurs between ages of 40 to 60 years. Again, there's that um, genetic the genotype, the genetic predisposition, and then the phenotype has to have that environmental um, or some sort of triggering um, before um, the uh, phenotype it get, is expressed. Okay, early symptoms are weakness, abdominal pain, and weight loss. This is the most common autosomal recessive genetic disorder with a prevalence of 1 in 200 to 1 in 500 individuals, mostly of Northern European uh, descent. So people with this um, with, with this disorder has mutations have mutations in the HFE gene, which is the gene that helps to detect the amount of iron in the body. It is located on the short arm of chromosome six. Okay, it's an autosomal recessive trait expressed in people who are homo homo homozygous or compound heterozygous. So by compound heterozygous, that refers to um, some people have, um, have uh, two different mutant alleles. So that's what's meant by compound heterozygous. It has incomplete penetrance. Okay, so lab tests are more useful than genetic testing. And so um, when penetrance, remember, when penetrance is low, that means not everyone who carries a genotype will show the phenotype. So... Um, that's why biochemical testing is more useful than genetic testing. Um, the, um, the biochemical testing that's done are levels of transferrin uh, saturation, which shows how much iron is stuck to transferrin, which is a protein that carries the iron in your blood. Um, also, levels of serum ferritin are drawn, which is a protein that stores the iron in your blood. Treatment is a therapeutic phlebotomy to help uh, rid the individuals of that excess iron and that requires elimination of 500 mils or one unit weekly or monthly, depending on um, their levels of iron okay, and ferritin. Okay, so without treatment um, for hemochromatosis, um, the excess iron um, um, uh, deposits in tissues, um, which I've already mentioned the early signs of fatigue, joint pain, and abdominal pain, but later signs include arthritis, liver cirrhosis, diabetes, cardiomyopathy, heart failure, skin discoloration. Um, there'll be bronzing from the iron deposition in skin. A long time ago, it used to be referred to as bronze diabetes. And later sign would also include hypopituitarism. So the National Institutes of Health, Institute of Health, recommends that all individuals with signs and symptoms of hypopituitarism with normal pituitary imaging because the most common cause of hypopituitarism isn't necessarily hemochromatosis at such a later stage and hopefully it'll get diagnosed much much earlier. Um, usually the typical symptoms um, that um, bring someone to a diagnosis would be um, first um, liver and then cardiac complications um, with this disorder. 
But um, with hypopituitarism, anyone who has signs and symptoms of that with normal pituitary imaging um, should be evaluated for hemochromatosis with iron studies. And the progression of symptoms can be affected by lifestyle factors such as the amount of iron intake, alcohol use, and infections. So certainly um, counseling um, against, uh, against these or um, along for this um, um, lifestyle modification is important to help prolong the um, progression, uh, delay the progression of uh, the disorder and decrease the severity. Okay, maturity onset diabetes of the young, or MODI, um, characterized by hyperglycemia, as most diabetes uh, conditions are, um, but the onset is usually before the age of 25. It is an autosomal dominant disorder. Uh, mutations in six different genes cause uh, the six major types. It accounts for 1 to 2% of people with diabetes. 85% of those, 1 to 2%, have uh, types 1, 2, or 3. Um, each of the genes involved plays a role in glucose metabolism. So here are some genetic uh, defects of B cell, um, B cell function. So you can see here the chromosome um, um, that affect and the gene that affects um, that affects um, the gene the, the gene on the chromosome and the chromosome number that affects with each disorder. Like MODI one, it's chromosome twenty. Um, and the gene associated with that, um, MODI2, chromosome 7, and that gene associated with that, um, and then MODI3, um, chromosome 12, and then the associated gene. Okay, this is on page um, 2, this is table 12-3, it's on page 244 um, in your book. Okay, and again, this is just a quick overview of, ch of the first um, half of chapter 12 for the first section. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, and um, please refer to um, uh, being able to answer those objectives. I believe, as, in, as with Unit 1, Unit 2 will also have a study guide um, that will be posted to assist with uh, test-taking um, in this section. Okay, thank you.